Welcome to everyone who has joined us today. My name is uh, Dr. Caitlin Fisher and I work at the University of Sydney. With me, I have three fantastic first year science students. We have April, Ella and Gemma who have very kindly volunteered their time to share their first year university student experiences with us all today. Um, I'm gonna ask you all to jump in to the Q&A window and type any question at all about uh, university or studying science or the HSC, um, feel free to ask and we'll be answering them as we go. Uh, but first, why don't we just hear from each of our wonderful students um, about their degree and what they think of studying at uni. Let's go to April first. My name is April and I'm in my first year of Bachelor of Veterinary Biology and Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Um, in the HSC, I studied Biology, uh, Food Tech, PE, Advanced Maths and Standard English. Um, one thing that I have noticed um, or learned in my first year at university is um, the level of individual learning and sort of like um, you know, allocating like time to do everything yourself, not being reminded constantly that, you know, this assignment's due this time, you have to, you don't sign to say, you know, you've received an assessment notification, you just have to know. Um, and another thing as well, I was quite um, naive going into my first year, I think. Um, and I thought that I would, you know, be able to step down a notch and not put in so much effort in my first year as I did in the HSE because I tried so hard um, and then I soon came to find out that uni is actually not a massive step down from the HSC and you still have to put in as much effort as you want um, to get out of the degree that you've applied for. Absolutely. Thank you, April. Um, let's move on to Ella. Ella, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Ella and I'm in my first year of a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Advanced Studies and I'm majoring in Medical Science and Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Um, in the HSC I studied English Advanced and Extension 1, Maths Extension 1, Biology, Chemistry and Physics. Um, one thing that really surprised me about being a university student was the flexibility and opportunity you get um, to basically have a really broad education. So you get to shape your degree through which majors you choose, which subjects you choose as electives and OLEs. For example, I did coding in semester one, which I never imagined that I would do, um, but I'm so glad that I did it because I think it will be something really helpful for me in the future. Um, and you also get to decide which level of difficulty of subjects you take. So whether you study part-time or full-time as well, or even if you decide to go on exchange. Um, and in certain cases, you can choose in which semester or year you want to study certain subjects. So the structure of your uni education really is totally up to you. Thank you, Ella. Um, last but not least, Gemma, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, um, I'm Gemma. I'm studying the Bachelor of Veterinary Biology, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, same as April. My HSC subjects were Advanced Extension 1 and Extension 2 English, Music, Studies of Religion 2 Unit, Mathematics Advanced and Extension 1, as well as Physics. Um, something that I found really helpful when studying for exams both at school and university is to consolidate my summaries into the simplest form possible, as in cutting out any unnecessary detail. I think that worked really well for me because, well, firstly, it meant that I had to remember less and it was less overwhelming coming into the study and seeing all my notes piled into a Word document. And secondly, it meant that I could be building a really strong foundation for the basic knowledge that I'd need if I was to try answering more difficult questions. Um, I think the most surprising thing about university study was how self-directed it was. Um, I think I was slightly aware before I came to uni that no one was going to be telling me what I needed to do. But then when I got here, there was just the lectures and then there was tutorials and then there was just you and you had to decide how much work you put in. Um, when you do the quizzes and assignments, um, whether you get them in on time or not. Um, and I think how much effort you put in is reflected in your marks. Thank you, Gemma. Um, 
Thank you everyone who's already jumped in and asked us some questions in the Q&A window. Uh, we are going to answer as many as we can in this half hour. Uh, let's just jump to it. This first one is for Ella. Uh, what's the difference between a Bachelor of Advanced Science and Advanced Science Advanced Studies? Um, I think they're pretty much the same thing, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so at different unis, um, some unis call it like advanced science, but it, you said advanced science is Bachelor of Science slash Bachelor of Advanced Studies. I'm pretty sure that's how I understand it anyway. Um, so, yeah. Because there are um, advanced subjects as well, aren't there? Yeah, definitely. So um, when you apply for your course, um, I, so I get to every semester, I get to choose my subjects and there are certain requirements to get into. So you have like the mainstream um, subject and then you have the advanced and then you have special studies program, which is like even more intense. Um, and there are different entry requirements. So for example, for advanced biology that I'm doing this semester, you need to have gotten a mark of 85 or above in the HSC for biology. Um, and usually for SSP, uh, subjects it's somewhere around 90 um, that you need to have received as a mark in the HSC so that's how you can get into those um, higher like levels of study, basically it's based on your HSC marks. Oh fantastic and um, correct me if I'm wrong Ella so your advanced studies degree is the three years plus the one special year isn't it do you want to just explain about that one special year yeah, sure. So the last year is honours um, and basically depending on how you go um, in your first three years, you get invited to do honours um, and from my understanding so far, it's essentially a year long research project um, and then you do sort of a bit of an honours thesis. So basically you, you carry out a research project throughout the year and you're in a lab um, and you're answering a research question um, and you're getting data and all those sorts of things. And then you write it up um, as a, basically a huge experiment and a huge scientific report, which is really cool. So um, it gives you lots of like practical experience in the lab and um, can help you sort of understand what being a scientific like researcher as a career, what that's like. Thanks, Ella. Uh, I'm going to direct this next one to Gemma, but April might like to chime in at the end. Uh, so, Gemma, why did you choose UCID for vet science? So, UCID is, I think it's the best in the Southern Hemisphere for veterinary science. So, I always aimed to get in here um, because it's just, it's got great facilities, it has great lecturers. Um, and the the other options to get into veterinary science in New South Wales is only in um, Wagga Wagga at Charles Sturt. So I wanted to go somewhere not too far from home, which is Maitland for me. So if I was to move to Wagga Wagga, that would be a little bit too far. Um, so yeah, just the location of Sydney Uni as well as its standing in global, um, its global standing as a university really um, drew me to it. Sorry. <laughs> No, thank you. And uh, no, that's great. Um, April, did you have anything to add why you came to UCID for VET? Pretty much for me, um, it was pretty similar to Gemma. Um, I didn't really want to move interstate or to somewhere super rural, so I applied to Sydney. Um, but other than that, there's like there's really not that many options for vet in Australia, especially on the east, like in the whole country, we've only got like five or six institutions that offer it. Um, and of those, Sydney is the most renowned. So um, I definitely think that, and I also think that I wanted to live somewhere where, you know, I had like, I was close to home and there were so many resources in Sydney. It's not like it's hard to find a job, accommodation's easy, you know, cost of living, it's a bit expensive, but not compared to if I had to move myself interstate or, you know, more than two hours away from my home. So that's the main reason why I chose Sydney as well. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Look, I'll, I'll do one more vet question since a bunch of them have come through. Uh, this one is from Jolly. Uh, for the Bachelor of Veterinary Biology, 
someone jiggled my screen. Okay, here we go. For the Bachelor of Veterinary Biology, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine course, getting vet experience has been very difficult since many vet clinics I went to aren't accepting volunteers due to COVID restrictions. Considering I don't have much experience with animals due to my family not having any pets, I am having trouble completing the commitment statement required. Do you have any advice regarding this situation? Now, I know Gemma and April, you both come from sort of farm backgrounds, don't you? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so, well, what I did for my, um, my experience, I have a local RSPCA really close to where I live. And so I got a lot of experience by working in the vet, in the cat and dog adoption section. And then I moved over to the clinic so that I could watch surgeries um, and like participate in helping the nurses. Um, and that's what I've been working through now. But with the COVID restrictions, I believe Sydney, I remember seeing something about Sydney Uni doing some sort of special consideration or um, like an exemption form because of COVID-19 from the... Um, from the, um, the admission form. But um, I think that if you have a look on the Bachelor of Veterinary Biology, um, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine page on the UCID website, there should be more information about that. Thanks, Gemma. Um, maybe if CZ and Bridget, or Bridget can uh, find that and post that in the chat or mail it to you all afterwards. Um, I've got a message, uh, a question right here for Ella. Um, Hi Ella, I wish to get into molecular biology. Do you feel that it is essential to do chemistry and extension maths for your HSC for my future degree? Uh, that's from Lucy. Okay, so I think chemistry Okay, so basically there are different, as I was saying before, there are different levels of subjects. So you can do like fundamentals of chemistry and fundamentals um, of like maths, basically. Um, I think it is, if you want to get into biochemistry, I think it is important to do chemistry um, because it's like basically an intrinsic part of the degree. So I would definitely suggest doing chemistry uh, in the HSC. Um, in terms of maths, I did extension maths, um, extension one, and, you know, maybe like maths probably, I'd say, isn't maybe that important. You do have to do maths in first year, like it is compulsory for a science degree, but you can choose different levels. Um, so HSC mathematics, or like, you know, just two units essentially, is um you can yeah. get by with that um so that's okay i don't think you necessarily have to do extension but i definitely would recommend chemistry thanks ella i've got another question about vet here um which i might push to april and then Gemma can chime in if she has something to add um for vet how often do you do practicals and what is your timetable like during the week how many days are you at university now i know this is a bit different this year um but maybe this is a great time to explain how your online practical lectures work so i am at uni pretty much five days a week except two of those days i have like I think only two or three hours of uni. So those are short days. Um, but the full days I have are like nine to five, nine to six. So it is um, pretty time consuming, but I'm pretty sure that's the same for any full time study. It's not extra than like a normal science degree. It's just like full time study is full time study. Um, my practicals at the start of the year when we were um, not online, I had one practical for bio a week, one practical for chemistry a week, one practical for my animals and us class a week. And I think that was it. So that was like nine hours because all of them are three. Um, my animals and us class, I got to go to Taronga Zoo, which was really fun. And this semester I was supposed to go to our farm down at Camden, but because of online learning, um, now we have sort of interactive online practicals through Zoom where our teachers slash um, 
instructors will make they make videos while they're down at the farms and um, they'll explain to us certain things about what we would be doing if we were there. Um, I think at the start of next year in orientation week, we're actually having an intensive day at one of at the farm in Camden um, to catch up on all of that first hand experience that we didn't get this year. Um, but yeah, I think it's um, definitely pretty like full on. I don't have a whole heap of spare time, but it's also like not any more. It's less hours than I would be going to school. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, did you have anything to add, Gemma, about your online experiences or? April and I pretty much have the same timetable, so we're all um, yeah, the same. All good then. Um, let's see, what else have we got? We've got, uh, what maths course is the best for me to aim for if I want to do a Bachelor of Vet? I'm pretty sure that advanced maths is a pre the only prerequisite for the Bachelor of Vet. And that's mostly because of the maths that is part of the core content that you have to do. You have to um, complete, like, I think, two units of maths before, which are you which are like require advanced as their prerequisite. Uh, yes, uh, two units of uh, maths at band four or above, and at not not the lowest maths level. That any any of the ones above that, um, and then you're okay. Um, all right, I've got a medicine question. Uh, hi, I was just wondering how I could do medicine at the University of Sydney because people have been saying that it's only a postgraduate study. Um, how does it all work? I'll throw this one to Ella. Okay, so um, basically at the University of Sydney, it is postgraduate. Um, so there is one option of how you can sort of try, like get into an undergraduate, essentially. Um, you can get into the combined degree of Bachelor of Science and Doctor of Medicine. So they're kind of just like stuck together. Um, you, I think when I was applying, uh, the ATAR for that was pretty much 99.95. So it's, it's rather hard to get into, not impossible, because I have definitely met people who are in it. So um, it is possible. Um, but yeah, it is postgraduate at UCID. So if you don't get into that combined program, then you can just do an undergraduate degree. Um, I'm doing science you don't have to do science because it's not a prerequisite for medicine but if you want to do graduate medicine like postgraduate medicine you'll have to sit the gamsat and for the gamsat you need to have hsc physics first year chemistry and first year biology so you can do an arts degree and teach yourself those subjects um, or you know whatever you want but for the gamsat you will need to know um, have that level of knowledge to be able to sit that and then you'll be hopefully invited to an interview at the University of Sydney and then get in like that. Thanks, Ella. Um, I have a pathways question about VET. So what pathways are there into VET science apart from just enrolling in the degrees in year one? April or Gemma, do you have any? Um, I, I can have a go. Um, I was actually looking at pathways when I applied because the high ATAR did scare me a little bit. Um, I think the main pathway that people, there's not, you know, a particular pathway per se, but a lot of people who um, want to add an extra backup plan or a black sort of plan B if they don't get an offer straight into the degree, they will apply for the, I think it's Bachelor of Animal and Veterinary Bioscience, it's AVBS. Um, and what that is, you are in the same cohort as the vet, the vet science people for the first two years. Um, and, and you can apply to be a part of the Bachelor of Veterinary Biology slash Doctor of Veterinary Medicine in those first two years. If someone drops out of that degree, then a spot opens up and they will accept people from the Animal and Veterinary Bioscience degree. Um, other than that, I don't know if there's but you can also like that's just a like one degree you could also swap in from any other degree i'm assuming but 
the coursework is super relevant because you're doing the exact same thing that that's why most people choose to do that option. No, thank you. Uh, look, no end of vet questions. So I'll ask Gemma first uh, for this one. Are there any opportunities for students to learn about exotic animals or wildlife for those interested, or is it mainly farm animals and small animals? So our first two years of the Bachelor of Veterinary Biology, we just do a foundation pretty much of biology and science in general. And then after that, we move into the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. And in those years, we spend a lot of time doing, so I think maybe the third year, the first year of the Doctor of Veterinary Doctor of Veterinary Medicine is spent um, working on campus here in the veterinary teaching hospitals. And then after that, we move on to um, various practices um, wherever we want to go. Um, and you can choose practices um, like you can do small animals or rural animals, or you can move into exotic um, and wildlife animals. If, um, if that's what you're interested in, you can just pick, um, you can pick the veterinary hospitals that are most applicable to what you're interested in. Thanks, Gemma. Um, a medicine question. Uh, for medicine, uh, I've heard about the GAMSAT and the UCAT tests. Can you tell me what's the difference between those? Yeah, so as far as I understand, the UCAT is for undergraduate medicine, which isn't offered at UCID, so you'll have to go to another uni for that. Uh, and the GAMSAT is for postgraduate medicine, which is offered at UCID. Could I just add something as well? Um, some universities um, offer the UCAT even for postgraduate medicine because at Newcastle University where I applied for medicine, um, I set the UCAT but they also, they don't use the GAMSAT at Newcastle Uni. So most universities use the GAMSAT for postgrad but some also use the UCAT. So it just depends which institution you apply to. I have an unusual question here. Any regrets about enrolling in vet science at this stage? So semester two, how are we going? Really? Okay. I mean, I'm not regretting it. I'm not loving it because it's not that great being at home and not getting that crucial firsthand experience that you expect to when you enroll in a vet degree. Um, but I'm sure when the DVM rolls around that, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, I'll be able to get back into the face-to-face -face learning and practicals. Um, it's definitely more full-on than I anticipated for the first year because I thought, you know, like I said earlier, I was a bit naive about first year uni. Um, but I don't regret that I think of the future more. Thank you. Um, here's a general question and anyone can answer this one. So when does your major need to be chosen? So neither April or I have majors. So um, ours is chosen for us by the degree that we chose. So maybe Ella would like to answer. Yeah, sure. Um, pretty much like right at the start. So when you choose your degrees at the start of semester one of first year, I mean, when you choose your subject, sorry, um, you'll have to choose a major then, or you can choose two majors if you do advanced studies as well. So, yeah, but there's a very comprehensive list um, in the undergraduate guide. So, and the undergraduate handbook, so you can read through that and there are lots of descriptions and, and um, you can email people and, and ask and things like that. So. I'll just add a sneaky little thing there. So um, these three students do, quite uh, structured degrees uh, in science. Whereas if you just did a Bachelor of Science degree with no medicine or no vet afterwards, um, there is a little more flexibility on like what you might choose as your elective subjects and then what might become your majors or like you could drop electives along the way and you're like, I thought I wanted this major, but now I have the flexibility to choose this other subject. Um, so yes, it, it does vary and um, planning your degree with a little flexibility can definitely help there if you're not quite sure what you wanna focus on. Um, I've got another general question here. How many international students in the class? You might not. I'm not 
quite sure because obviously we haven't met some of the international students haven't even made it to here yet because of the travel ban. Um, I'm under the impression that there is a few, but it's not, I don't think it's like a crazy amount. Um, I think it's pretty balanced, but again, like, I don't know because I've just met these people. I'm not like, you can't really tell by just meeting people, whether they're international or from Australia. So, um, but I, I don't think it's, crazy i know that there was only a few people that couldn't make it at the start of the year because of the travel ban um but i don't know how many there exactly are oh thank you um uh, thank you all so much look we've come to sort of the end of our half hour um and i don't want to keep people too much longer. We, we have another session of these Q&As coming up uh, pretty much exactly like this uh, on the 14th of September and you can check out, let me just push to our contact pages on our slides. Um, for more information you can contact us at schools.outreach or uh, check out our website for more events such as this which are especially tailored to um, HSC or interested students such as yourselves. Why don't I just close off uh, as we go just with one really general question. Um, are you, do you think you're going to get your dream job through this degree? Uh, I might pass on to Gemma first. I think I will, yeah, because I think from a very young age I've wanted to work in some sort of veterinary practice, whether it be with rural um, like um, farm animals or domestic species like cats and dogs or even with wildlife. I don't know specifically what, what I would like to specialise in, but I think the degree, especially the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, is leading to me leading me to a path towards the um, working in some kind of clinical animal hospital. Yeah, and April, I think you were saying something about vectors between animals and humans when we were talking before. Did you say vectors? Yes. Oh, yes. Zoonotic diseases. I was um, talking about that. <laughs> yeah, so I've always wanted to, um, I've been interested in all kinds of medicine, human medicine and animal medicine throughout my whole life. Um, I applied for both when I was applying for degrees. And um, I also, once I got into the vet degree, I um, no, like found the opportunity that I would be able to do uh, study like zoonotic diseases which is like in this climate like current day and age is extremely relevant and extremely um, progressive so um, I definitely think when I graduate if I'm not going to study you know normal veterinary medicine in a practice I'll be able to you know investigate human and animal medicine together which I think is totally cool. Oh, fantastic. Um, and Ella, I think I remember you having a very long term plan for your career pathways. Yeah, um, so basically I would love to do some sort of science research and also um, work as a practicing doctor if I could um, and maybe do some teaching as well at some time in my career. Um, and I think that my degree definitely is setting me up for that because science is um, my science degree is basically, basically giving me really good experience in, in research. Um, so if I do honours, then through honours, and also there are other research projects along the way. Um, and also I've been able to already in my first like one semester, I've been able to study human biology, which um, has sort of reinforced to me that I really am interested in medicine and studying human disease. Um, and on top of that, just in general, I'm studying subjects that I really do enjoy. And I think if you're studying what you love, then you'll definitely end up in your dream job. And with that lovely optimistic end, I just want to say thank you again for joining us today. Good luck with your studies and enrolling. And we hope very much to see you at the University of Sydney. If you get here, um, we will look forward to seeing you. All right. Bye.